ready, 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 ready. Anthony Mascola. After I'd finished a two-year hairdressing course, I applied for a job at Tony and Guy. We'd moved into Davis Street, and Anthony was just now really getting into hairdressing with us. It got to the point where I was doing hair and I'd see other people's work and I started thinking, I'm pretty good at this and then it became infectious. I wanted to be the best and really, you know, just kept on trying to do things that no one else was doing. I can remember Pat came in for her interview with her dad and obviously that was the very beginning of the love story. <laughs> no, we were friends first. She very quickly progressed and became part of Anthony's artistic team. And on doing the shows, she would be immaculate and finishing. The execution was phenomenal. See, my brother would always say, right, right, I'm going to keep you two. You two should go out, you should go out, you should be together. <laughs> <laughs> he used to always try and push us together. In a selfish way, you know, I thought, man, if these two could get together, this could be really an incredible team. And Tony and Guy could really become big. When we started working together more, and then, you know, things just kind of, you know, Changed. I stopped arranging your dates. <laughs> when we were on tour, I, I always took the model's names and he'd say, put a star by that one or put a star by that one. <laughs> so I ended up not putting a star by them anymore. And once they became a couple, it was amazing because now we had creativity, we had incredible execution, we had everything that a, a real artistic team should have. It gave me the opportunity to really fulfill the dream that I once had, that we could become a, Tony and Guy could become a household name, you know? It was a big competition time amongst hairdressers at that point. You started to think, you've got to do stuff that's better than that. But we had really developed two different cultures of Tony and Guy. One which was Tony's culture and one which was mine and Guy's culture. And at the time, we felt that, that it may be a good time to be able to look at it and demerge so that we would have two different companies. We got the opportunity through a demerger that we would then start working and creating just for TG. As we were going to do uh, TG Global, it was perfectly fine for us to work with Anthony, even though he was based in London. Our children were at school, so we didn't want to moved to America, we wanted to stay in London. From having all these guys that we were working with, we ended up, we were just on our own. I do remember the call from Anthony, it was probably close to midnight, and he said, Mike, we've done it, it's it, it's all done. So what do you mean? He said, well, we've signed the papers. Then we needed to grow a new family, really, because it was all about, your team was your family. He was excited, he was very much up for it, but I could also sense an element of anxiousness. One of the first ones that came with us was Mara, it has always been really part of the family. We used to play together as children in the same part of South London. And uh, he, he came around to play, we were upstairs in the loft, and he started smoking. Um, of course, my mother smelt the smoke, came upstairs and went completely mad at us. I, of course, got clipped round the ear because she couldn't really tell him off. And uh, basically, it's been 40 years of the same thing ever since. What's really great that I felt really good about is because I had my wife, Kyra, in one hand, who, in my mind, was a, a complete genius in product development and marketing ideas. And on the other hand, I had my brother Anthony, who was a hairdressing genius who had expanded upon that, creating a total look with his photography as well. So we now had control of their image and control of product. What we were gonna be doing was creating image and you know, creating new styles and working tightly with America. We ended up at a flat round the corner in the living room there to start off with. And we'd be working, choosing pictures and doing the book, but we had nowhere really to shoot. He said, look, you know, what we're gonna do, is we need to get creative, we need to get excited. Pat and I, we need a base away from the house. I remember Anthony coming into the flat, going, oh, I found somewhere for it, I found somewhere for us. And we came round here to look at it. And that really was the birth of Bedhead Studio. He said, look, this is the place where we'll be creative. This is the place we'll get excited and we'll, and we'll support Bruno and Kyra with the brand. It was a natural way of building your own family. The studio had a family feel. 
TEG had a family feel, and I feel like that's how it did build. Alex was a great example. I mean, Anthony used to cut his hair from the age of six. I remember the first day, I was sweeping the floors. I used to have to shampoo Anthony's clients, soaked a few of them. And, uh, Elaine Page, I remember absolutely soaking. She wasn't particularly happy. Whether it's someone that's been working for us 10 years or they just started, guess what? They're in the house. They're having dinner with us, you know? It, it wasn't just all about work. It, they, they brought that family attitude into work. One of our first shoots, actually, for, for TG was in Prague. I was wandering around with basically what was a domestic video camera and Anthony's seeing the models and he's playing with the hair and I'm trying to film what he's doing. And as we're moving around, all of a sudden we get a lens flare and because the girl's hair is really big, oh, he's getting really excited. He's spinning me round and round this model till basically I'm about to fall over. And that was our first video. So Anthony decided that it would be a good idea to, uh, to use me in, in one of the bedhead campaigns. He said, oh yeah, you've got great hair, you are bedhead. But that was me. This was maybe 2004. Some dust. <laughs> ah, shit. America were coming up with all these great new products and great new ideas for products and saying to Anthony, right, let's have some imagery that we can put out to promote this kind of stuff. We needed to find people that then could aid us in what we wanted to do. I was literally on a train to go and sign this three-year contract and Anthony called me to say, look, I've got this idea of you coming in and maybe you know, being my creative director, is it something that you'd be interested in? You always need someone that can, can see what you're doing and can, you know, grasp it and do it well. And, and Nick was always very good at that. So, literally, I, I got off the train and, and headed back to London. And then Akosh came. He'd been kicked out of America because his papers weren't in order. Anthony heard about the situation. He said, why don't you come to London and until you get your new visa, you can just hang out with us, have fun. We nabbed him and brought him here to London and uh, he's, he's never left. And then Roberto came in because my brother knew him from El Salvador. Anthony invited me to one of his shoots and during a break, there was a computer empty and I saw one of his images and I started playing around a little bit with it, made it look a little bit more like film. And, uh, and it was good. So I offered him a job and he came and he worked with us. As soon as people discovered, hey, Anthony Muscolo and Pat are building a team at Bedhead. You know, the phone started ringing and people wanted to get involved. So obviously fashion is a very big part and Jib's played an enormous part. He was really able to create all the different images that we needed for the shoots and for the shows. It was a small team and, and there was so much pressure on us to create images really, really fast. Just pick up the phone and ask Anthony, look, this is what we want to advertise. Within a day or so, he'd add it to me. The hair, the picture, everything that we needed so that we could spontaneously come out with brand new things all the time. The mission was to excite the hairdresser through products, through films, through imagery, through doing shows. We'll start on a Monday morning and work through into the evening late, create this imagery. Tuesday morning it would be on the desk in America. We never stayed still and I think that was very much a core strength of what we had at the very beginning. Everybody in the States looked at London for inspiration. We wanted to make really, really amazing films. And I think Michael working with Anthony was a pivotal moment. The brief was no more than six, seven words long. And he just said, can you do me something cool that's about what we do? Bedhead TG. It's a lifestyle. I had to learn that following what other companies were doing wasn't where we were. We were about setting a standard and leading other companies this magic, we needed to expose it to the world, to the hairdresser. So my role was to take all those assets and deliver them for shows and events. And the idea came up, let's do a massive show in Las Vegas. So that's when we booked the Mandalay Bay. Mm, let's get ready to rumble! They were blown away by it. It was a combination of education, entertainment, creativity. It was amazing. When Bedhead exploded in America, it was a, a very special time. It was a pivotal point in the company going from a certain level to, to what it became. Superstars, celebrities, it was being endorsed on TV. It would became a household name very, very quickly. Over the years, we've built this really fabulous team, a team that are all equally as amazing in their own right. Creatively, it's important to use people that are better than yourself because 
that helps you to learn more. One of the unique things is that we have a fantastic education. We share everything. That's how you learn to create more. The more you give away, the more you actually need to learn. And that creates a continuous flow of excitement for the hairdressers. Our job is to keep exciting the hairdresser. That is the essence of the studios. Anthony's a hairdresser. A hairdresser is giving him everything, but he's giving everything to hairdressing. The ability and the courage that he has to push the envelope and go forward and lead with something that nobody's ever seen is impeccable, it's amazing, and that's probably what gave us the edge. Looking at what's going on at TG, how it's formulated itself over the last few years, joining forces with Unilever, I think the future is going to be very exciting. If anybody is to ask me how I would explain my success, it's because I married a genius. Yeah, well, who else have you married? <laughs> <laughs>